Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Motivation for Young Christians. Welcome back, welcome back. Welcome back to another Bible study episode, episode 39. Today we have Brother Gio. We'll be diving into John chapter 18, verses 19 through 27. Then we're going to start for the prayer by Brother Gio and end off for the prayer by me. Our Father, our God, our Lord, our Savior, our comfort, our peace, our love, our joy. All honor and glory be unto your name. We exalt you. We love you. We give you all the glory, O oh Lord. We're taking you up on your invitation into your throne room, into your presence. As we open up your word, the living word, the only true word, we ask you now, Father, as we come before you, that you would reveal unto us the things that we ought to see that would cause a change in us as you desire for it to be. Speak to us, Holy Spirit. Give us wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. And I pray that all that you impress upon us, all that you would reveal unto us, but not only stop with us, Lord, but that it would overflow unto others who we may encounter on a day-to-day -day basis. Position our hearts to receive you, open up our ears to hear you, and give us, all oh Lord, the capacity to understand. We thank you. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen. Today, Bible study will be led by Brother Gio. So last week, right, we had... Um, Jesus is now taken into captivity for the first time. They're bringing up, they're trying to bring him up on charges. So they have him in front of, uh, I think his name is Caiaphas. Um, <clears throat> pretty much a guy who, who gave the counsel to the Jews. And uh, so he's just pretty much asking him questions. Or he's getting ready to ask him questions, which you're about to read about. But um, just before we get to that part, we have a little small like side thing with Peter where he is uh he he denies Christ, right? Christ told him, you know, you deny me three times before the cock crows. And so he he already denied him one time, I believe we got to. And now we're getting ready to go to the uh the questioning phase um with between the conversation between Jesus um and Caiaphas. All right, so verse 19 says, inside the high priest began asking Jesus about his followers and what he had been teaching him. And Jesus replied, everyone knows what I teach. I have preached regularly in the synagogues and the temple where the people gather. I have not spoken secret. Why are you asking me this question? Ask those who heard me. They know what I said. Then one of the temple guards standing nearby slapped Jesus across the face. Is that the way to answer the high priest? He demanded. Jesus replied, if I said anything wrong, you must prove it. But if I'm speaking the truth, why are you beating me? Then Annas bound Jesus and sent him to Caiaphas, her high priest. Okay, so before he was talking to Annas, now he's going to send him to Caiaphas, the high priest. Yeah. Okay. One of my questions came about with verses 24. Because in the beginning of 19, it says inside the uh, high priest begins like asking Jesus questions. Uh, but then 24 says they sent him to the high priest. So wasn't he already at the high priest? Because that's kind of confusing because they're saying the high priest started questioning him. Now you're sending him to the high priest. Mm -hmm. uh, let me let me go back and see if Caiaphas is the high priest. In fact, let me see. Simon Peter Drew. Um, looking at like what we did last week, verse 12 says, The band and the captain and officers of the Jews took Jesus and bound him and led him away to Annas, Annas first, for he was father in law to Caiaphas, which was the high priest that same year. Now, Caiaphas was he which gave counsel to the Jews that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. So it looks like. Let me see verse 13. First they took to 
took him to Annas since he was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest at the time. That is weird. It looks like Annas was just the father-in-law and Caiaphas was the high priest. Caiaphas was the one who had told the other Jew Jewish leaders it's better that one man should die for the people. And what verse is that that said that he took him? 19? Yeah, 19, where it says uh, inside the high priest. Like, oh, you said where they took him. It says inside the high priest began asking Jesus about his followers and what he had been teaching them. Yeah, and then 19 says that Annas bound Jesus and sent him to, I don't know how you said that one, Cap, Capus? Capulus? Caiaphas or something. Caiaphas, like the high priest. And Annas bound Jesus and sent him to Caiaphas. So the only thing I can gather is that maybe Annas and Caiaphas were high priests. I'm not sure. I know scripturally, like like in Leviticus, when um, Exodus and Leviticus, when, when God is giving Moses the law, like he's setting up their, their, their um, Judaism belief, right? He, um, he sets apart Aaron to be the high priest and his sons to be the priest. Um, and the high priest and the priest, they sort of kind of have like, one had more, I guess, power and authority over the other. Um, but in this sense, it looks like they're both high priests. I can look, I can look into it a little bit more and find out. Um, I just wanted to make sure because that kind of like trip tripped me up. Because in my mind, I'm thinking if either one of them is a high priest and one of them is below him. So like, you know, like how you got the CEO and then the CO. So I'm thinking it was kind of like that. Well, it's for sure that Caiaphas or Caiaphas, I don't know my father pronounced his name. I'm sure that he's definitely the high priest. But I'm not sure why it said the high priest was questioning him and was talking about Annas. But, mm -hmm. Let me see. Uh, what was it? Inside, the high priest began asking Jesus about his followers and what he had been teaching them. Why are you asking this question? And Anne is bound Jesus and sends him to Caiaphas. That is weird. I'm not sure. I don't know if there's more than one high priest or I'm not sure what, like Anne is, I'm not sure what his position is, but we can look back at it. Um, I could look into it a little bit deeper. Or maybe we both can and find out exactly what Anne is. See, they talk about him <clears throat> in the other gospels and see if we can compare it. Um, all right, so let's, let's 25. So meanwhile, as Simon Peter was standing by the fire warming himself, they asked him again, you're not one of his disciples, are you? He denied it, saying, no, I'm not. But one of the household slaves of the high priest, a relative of the man whose heir Peter had cut off, asked, didn't I see you out there in the olive grove with Jesus? Again, Peter denied and immediately a rooster crowed. Okay, now I have two questions mm -hmm. for verses 26 and verses 27. So with verses 27, how did the household slave knew that Peter was in the um the olive grove? The olive grove. How did he know? He said, did not see you out there. He must have been there. Because <laughs> I'm thinking, since he a household slave, don't they just stay in the house? So that's 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 what yeah, I was thinking. You could be bound to like, like so. I'm just thinking like, all right, let's say for example, like slavery, like the house slaves, right? So they would be in the house doing the laundry, but back then you didn't have a dryer, so you had to come out and hang the you know hang the clothes outside on the line. So at some point you had to leave the house. You know, you wasn't like bound to the house and you couldn't ever leave. There was probably some task that involved you having to leave the house. That's just what I'm imagining. So, uh, you know, he said, I saw you. So he had, at some point, he had to have been out there for whatever reason. You know, he could have been plucking some olives, you know, to press them to make oil or something. I'm not sure. Okay. And yeah. what did the, and then in verses 27, what does it mean, Arusa crowed? So that's what I was trying to find before we got started. Um, the conversation between Jesus and Peter. Um, he, he, uh, 
Jesus had said something. I can't, I don't know why I'm drawing a blank right now. Holy Spirit, if you can give me the insight, but Jesus said something to, to the disciples. And I think Peter was like, no, you, you can't do that. Like, and you know, I, I would never like leave you. I think, I think Jesus was saying, I gotta go. And Peter was like, no, I'll never leave you. And, and Jesus was like, oh, like Peter, take it easy, bro. Like, you, you think you're about this life, but there's still so much more for you to learn. And he's like, you're gonna deny me three times before the cock crows. So I want let me see if I can find that. Let me see if I can find that. So that's pretty much so so because they talks about talk about the cock crowing, um what do you call it? I want to say from the time Jesus was in the olive grove up until the time of questioning, I want to say it was like throughout the night. And then now it's like the wee hours of the morning, so like five o'clock and now this cock is crawling. And he's pretty much like saying like, you're gonna deny me before the day even starts. Like you're gonna deny me before the day. So <clears throat> I'm trying to find the conversation right now. Um, oh, finally, okay, found it. <clears throat> All right, so it's 1336. Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, where, where are you going? Or I'm in the King James, whither, whither goest thou? And Jesus answered him, where I go, you can't follow me now, um, but that you shall follow me afterwards. And Peter said unto him, Lord, why can I follow you now? I will lay down my life for your sake. Real big man talk. Jesus answered, will you lay down your life for my sake? Verily, verily, I say unto you, the cock shall not crow till you have denied me three times. So I'd, I'd love to do a study to figure out the point in time where he said this and how much time lapsed, well, how much time went by before it actually was fulfilled. Like, I'm pretty sure there's a way to figure that out. I mean, I never really thought about it until just now, but, you know, was that like a week, a couple days? You know what I mean? Like... It's I'm, just, guessing, I'm guessing weeks because that happened in chapter 13, we in chapter 18. So it's necessarily I'm, I mean I mean it could be. I mean I, I don't I don't think the, the number of the chapters or anything have to do with anything, but it, it could it could be a certain time frame. But I guess the point that we can take from this is I don't think as Christians we should ever feel as though that we've reached a certain plateau. Like, oh, I'm a Christian, good. Like, you know, I'm, I mean, I am. There needs to be a forever hunger, a forever thirst. Like, <clears throat> you could never feel as though like you've reached the point where I, I'm good, I can coast. Like, I, I just get the depiction of, you know, an, a, a lion, right? Like when, whenever you know you got the animals kind of crowded around the the water and they're all drinking with their heads down, and here is the lion just creeping, you know, creeping, and he's he's just always looking for the next prey, and you're not, and you're you're in this happy moment, you're in this good moment where you're just enjoying the living water, you're enjoying your your time, and then all of a sudden poof, there's an attack, and you're like. And it's just like, especially if he gives you a warning, right? Like, Jesus gave Peter a warning. Like, what Jesus, like, what Peter thought he was, like, going to do, like, lay down his life for Christ. Like, we all cry out these songs, oh, Lord, I, I live for you. I, I give you my all. And, and then the moment <laughs> we're faced with an opportunity to really show what we were just saying. We realize that it's not in our power that we can do any of these things. And that leads me to my next point. It's so, so, so essential, so important that we develop a relationship with the Holy Spirit. 
the disciples had Christ walking side by side. But when he left, he sent another member of the Godhead to live inside. And that's the Holy Spirit. So everything Jesus was doing while he was walking on earth is now living on the inside of us, the Holy Spirit. And it is only in him, by him, through him, that we are able to live this life of faith victoriously. We have to continue to develop our knowledge of the Holy Spirit. Now, some people think the Holy Spirit is like some type of oogity-boogity type thing that you can't really understand. Some people call him an it. I don't understand it. Like, and, and it's just because we're, you don't necessarily have people really teaching on the Holy Spirit. They feel like, if some people feel like you, it's only for a certain group, certain age, you got to be a Christian for a certain amount of time. Nah, mm -mm. there's scriptures that prove that as soon as people believe in the book of Acts, Holy Spirit, they were baptized in the Holy Spirit. So, you know, we, as much as we can say how much of a Christian we are, it doesn't really stick until you're tested and your faith is tested. Then you really see who you, whose strength you're relying on. Is it yours or is it your empowerment through the Holy Spirit? So Peter denied Christ three times. How many times have you denied Christ? Right. Let's just say it's a few it's, times. Yeah, let's just say a few times. Yeah, it, 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 like, a few all, times. like we all deny Christ in some way, shape, or form. And and it's even in the small things, like like if our parents tell us to do something or, or not to do something, and we're sneaking to go do it. I, the fact that you're sneaking, something in your mind is telling you that you're not supposed to do it. So your flesh is then leading you to go sneak and do it. That's something in your mind telling you that what you're doing is wrong, that you shouldn't do it, is, is uh, the Holy Spirit. So it's literally, you got the devil and you got the angel. <laughs> and that's, that's really what happened. Like, I love those cartoons because as a kid, you don't think nothing of it, but now it makes sense. Like... Your mom said, don't do this. Or your dad said, don't do this. If you just sneak, nobody going to find out. You get through it. No, just do it real quick. Hurry up. Close the door. They won't see you. I see you. I can see what you're doing. <laughs> That's like, and, and, and if you can disobey God in the little things, like, it, it's just, if you compare it to obeying him, I don't even know how to explain it, but when you, when you, when you develop this relationship where you, you hear the voice of God and you, and you know that it's him and, and, and you become obedient to that voice, you have no idea how clearly the voice of God becomes to you. Like the more you obey him, it's just like his voice, his leading and his guidance your 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 level of intimacy with him, your relationship, it just becomes so much stronger. It's like the best example is if I'm if a stranger is calling you from up the block, yo, yo, that's just that's just so yo, you like and you and you don't answer. Do you think the stranger's gonna keep calling you? At some point he'll stop because you're ignoring him. And that's like the Holy Spirit. To you, the Holy Spirit is a stranger. But he knows you, you don't know him, but he's calling you and you're not listening. So there's a good chance he might stop and let you go live life like you think you're living it freely. But there comes a cost for living life, quote unquote, freely under your rules and regulations. You may think everything is sweet now, but there will come a time where you have to pay. So <laughs> I know that. I yeah. know, I know that. Cause I remember when I used to live life free, you know, do it out more, and just pretty much, you know, doing me, sure. just basically doing me. It was fun, but then I had to pay the consequences for it. As a result of me being freely and doing what I want, when I started to not be that person, I had to bear consequence for it because 
Um, because I think this was anybody when you're doing a process of changing and becoming a new person, them old stuff that you did is going to keep on bringing back, it's going to keep on coming up. And especially if you did something to somebody, they're going to still have that, like, yeah, I remember when Gio put his hands on me, I remember when you did, 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 did. and it's like that. I think that affected so much opportunity for me because of the way I did some stuff and like the past. And it gets frustrating, but the only person I could be mad at is myself because it's not like God caused that, somebody else caused that. It wasn't like it was anybody else's responsibility, anybody else's um, not responsibility for. It was on me. I decided to do certain stuff. I decided to say certain stuff. And you, I, you just had to. Yeah. I, I just had to pay for all this. Well, not I ain't pay for all the stuff I did, but it's a lot of stuff that I had to pay for that I did. And then I think that's like I like I love watching superhero movies because of all these powers that they have, right? These abilities. But I think that we forget that we too have a superpower. And you kept saying it just now, what your superpower was. Choice. Like your choices, every choice gives you power power to do something like right now i could choose to be like i'm gonna be a millionaire and that's my choice so my mind is made up i'm gonna do everything in my power to go after the money what type of impact that's gonna have on my life and those who are in my life like you know even god my relationship with god like we choice is such a huge power that we have and if we don't harness that power the right way it can cause us to be overwhelmed and overtaken by that power so every morning choose to choose christ every morning choose christ the moment you wake up choose christ put him first make him the priority speak with him first thing in the morning just try to try your best to like start your day with him and, and, and throughout the day periodically spend time speaking to him as you're walking, as you're transitioning from moment to moment, because keeping your mind fixed on him changes the trajectory of your day, of your week, of your month, of your year, of your life. Peter was so caught up in, in, in protecting Christ and Christ didn't need any protection. The scriptures had to be fulfilled. Like, why didn't any of the other disciples jump up and try to protect Christ, right? I, I try to think about that. Like, sometimes we just get so caught up in the moment that we're not taking the time to fully analyze and assess what's happening before us through the lens of Christ. But as we take it day by day, moment by moment, with Christ in mind, acknowledging that we're following him and, and he he's not following us like he's in the front and we're just going before him we're going with him then it just it, it changes so just a small reminder you know peter denied christ even after being told he was going to do it so three times right three times so let's just be mindful in our choices because we too can easily find ourselves denying Christ. Which I agree on. And then also, sometimes it may be harder to follow God but uh, in a choice. But what I learned is that sometimes the hardest choices come with an easier response or like, um, yeah, with an easier response. And sometimes the easiest choices come with a harder response. Um, you get what I'm trying to say, or you want me to explain that? Oh, yeah, what do you mean by that? Okay, so you can have the choice to go rob a bank, easy choice. The response to robbing that bank is that you're gonna go to jail, which is a hard response. But then you can have the choice to where you want to go, where you want to do it, but then guys are like, no, 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 and your mind is focused on that, and that may be a hard choice, but then with you staying inside. The response to that is that you're not gonna get locked up. You're not gonna go to jail. Basically, so what I'm saying is basically like some of the harder decisions come with with easier response, and then some of the easier decisions come with harder response. I got you. And and you know, it's funny you say that because 
in your mind, it may sound easy to rob a bank, <clears throat> although the consequences are a lot more crucial versus in your mind, it may be more difficult to obey what God is telling you to do or not to do. And, and the results are what appears to be not so grain, not so large, like, you know what I mean? But two things. First thing is I think that jail or prison is far easier than eternal life in hell. As you spend more time with Christ, those what used to be hard decisions now become not even a thought in your mind so that you don't even, like you won't even think to be having, like you won't find yourself in a situation to have to make that decision. Let me explain myself. So you said you use the choice of robbing a bank. Um, so like right now in this season where you're not necessarily walking with Christ or you just started your walk with Christ, you're thinking about robbing a bank. As you spend more time walking with him, as you develop a relationship, reading his word, going to church with fellow believers, spending time with other fellow believers, praying, fasting, like studying the word, and just really like, you know, watching sermons, listening to the gospel, you just downloading all good stuff into your body, right? Into your mind. Something starts to happen. You don't, you don't think about robbing banks anymore. You don't think about doing bad anymore. Like, not to say it all goes away, but some of it goes away and it just it just slowly starts to fade away. And, 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 and but you have to be intentional about your choices, which is I wanna to choose to wake up this morning and pray. I'm gonna choose this morning to wake up and read the word okay, it's my lunch break. I can either go on my, on my, on my phone, check my timeline, or I could do a quick devotional. All right, it's time to go to bed. I could go, I could go through my timeline, lay in my bed, check and see what's happening on social media. Find myself just fl scrolling and scrolling and looking at this, looking at that. Or I could pray and then close my eyes. Or I could do a devotional. Close my eyes after that. Like, like those are all choices. You could choose to be updated with the latest news in the world or on your social media, or you can be you can choose to strengthen your relationship with God by spending more time with Him. Choices. They're very important. Like me right now, taking a break from social media. I've been taking one since the beginning of this year. I've only post like one time for this year. It's because I really wanted to post something. But other than that, uh, I just I just been off of it, just trying to focus on me because I was spending way too much time on social media. Like, if you check my activities, I'm at least a good four or five hours out of the day on there. I can't. My, my, my head starts to hurt. I can't even. Like, and then even, like, I think my eyes have just become like so sensitive to like the stuff that I see. Like if I'm scrolling and I see like, like it's just me, like I'm not in, in, in saying like this is how everybody should be. But for like, if I just see certain things, bro, I'm like, I just turn my phone. I just get, I just close the app. Like, it's like, what, why? why? <laughs> I just be so confused. I'm like, well, I don't understand, but it's just where I am right now in, my, in this season, like where I am in my walk. Cause before I can just keep scrolling, looking at it, and even find it interesting, the stuff that I'm looking at. But now it's just like it, it, it's sickening. Like it, it just like why would somebody want to do that? Like so, just like I said, be intentional about your choices. Like make up your mind. Like you wake up every morning and you make up. Just like you told me, you told me years ago, bro. I'm gonna be at the top of my class. You made your mind up to do that. Oh yeah, I accomplished that too. You see what I'm saying? And because that's because your mind was made, that's a choice you made. And we gotta do the same thing about choosing Christ. Every day, every moment by moment. It doesn't stop in just the morning. Oh, I pray this morning. Okay, cool. And you the rest of the day. Nothing. No communication with God. Like it's all it's all about our choices. And 
Uh, with me also, the main reason why I took a break from social media is because one, I was being on there way too much time. I, like I mentioned before, I was at least being on there like a good four hours out of the, the day. And then two, just the stuff you were seeing, there's just so much negativity, so much, um, and the, like, it's like every time you go in there, somebody got shot. Somebody got shot. This person died, that person died. It was just, it was just so much negativity. I just didn't need to be hearing and looking at that. So I decided to, to take the break. And I love it. And even when I feel the urgency to go look at what somebody doing, I don't. I mean, I've been on it a couple of times, but only just to check my DM, just in case uh, somebody messaged me or something like that. But other than that, I get straight off. I'll check my DMs just to make sure like if somebody hit me up or whatever, I get I get right off and mm -hmm. I love it. I just love not being occupied by it. And also I've been doing my fasting, which has been hard. I've been doing uh no meat, uh two meals a day, and then water only. Now I filled the water only a couple of days and then the two meals a day, I filled that couple of days. The meat I have not filled. I've been twenty days strong. But it's just not with that too, not having an urgency to always eat chicken or like pork and stuff like that. It's weird. But I like it. And I'm and Monday, uh, I finished my three weeks of fasting and I might just continue it and just continue it, continue being off of social media, just continue spending time with God. The important message for today, guys, your choices are important. Your choices will not only impact you, but it can also impact the people around you. So be careful with the choices that you made and just continue to work on yourself, continue to work with God. I'm good, man. Just moment by moment, choose Christ. Choose Christ. Now, guys, we'll begin into the close and prayer for today, which will be done by me. If you can, bow your heads and close your eyes. Holy Father, we thank you, we praise you, we worship you, God. We thank you for this morning to be able to come together as brothers, God. Iron to be able to sharpen the iron, God, to be able to learn about your word, to be able to learn about why did Peter deny you? him three times to be able to learn about what are the significance of your scripture god and we pray that as the message was revealed to us today that choices are very important god we pray we'll make wise choices god we pray that when temptation come our way that we'll always say it, that lead us not to temptation but deliver us from evil and power and the power of the glory forever and ever amen god we just pray that you continue to just be with us each and every day god we pray that the choices that we make will make them carefully and be responsible with our choices god we pray that you continue to be with us each and every day god i'm praying this upcoming week that you bless and guide every single body on the way to work on the way to school whether they're home wherever they are god just continue to protect them god i pray that the people that didn't have food on their table this week that you'll be able to bless them with food on their table god in Jesus, in your holy name, amen. This is the end of the video, guys. Thank you guys for coming back each and every single week. This is Bible Study episode 39. If you haven't already liked the video, if you liked it, subscribe if you're new. Turn on your post notifications. This is Motivation for Young Christians. We'll see you guys next week on the 40th episode of Bible Study. Amen. Have a blessed day.